So mid stance favors internal rotation, pronation, hamstrings, anterior glute meat. However, it's common that the left foot is already pronated. So why do we focus on driving IR on that side? So what the unknown person is talking about is the common compensatory pattern, Dunnington stress pattern, left AIC, whatever you want to call it, I don't really care. What's happening in that situation is you're dealing with a twist of an extremity going one direction and another joint going the other direction, which is very common to see. We talked about that earlier in this deep, particular debrief with the foot when I had a situation where the calcaneus is inverted, but the mid-tarsal joint is pronated. That would be a twist. If you're seeing a situation where I have to drive um, supination, but then I got to drive IR of the femur, that's exactly what you're seeing. So with the common compensatory pattern, the zinc pattern, or whatever you want to call it, I don't care. You can call it the, the pattern that you like. What you'll see with that oftentimes is... I think Bill will call this a uh, oblique axis of the uh, pelvis as well. Right oblique orientation, whatever. But with this particular situation, at the femurs on the right, you're gonna have internal rotation. With the left femur, you're gonna have external rotation, which means I won't be able to go the other direction. So the right femur will have a loss of ER. The left femur is gonna have a loss of IR. Let's move down. Do, 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 do. Good thing my son here has a knee joint. If I have a right femur that is internally rotating and I can't ER, what will oftentimes happen is the tibia will do a compensatory external rotation. So now you got a twist at the, at the knee joint, which at the foot will uh, exhibit a inversion of the calcaneus. And then sometimes, folks, you might see that concomitant turning out of the foot. Well, then guess what, folks? The, the mid-tarsal joint starts to pronate and you get all types of weird things going on at the foot. That is a common compensatory strategy. On the left side. So remember, the femur is ERing, can't IR. Well, folks, I might need to IR what will that look like at the tibia? The tibia might internally rotate, so now I got a twist at the knee joint, which then leads to the foot, if you could imagine me transposing this to being a left foot, is gonna have more of a everted calcaneus, and it will be flattened. Can you have some twists in the foot? Sure, but that's just the general rule. So when we see a situation that the unknown question asker is asking, where, okay, my left foot's pronated, why am I driving IR? The reason why you're driving IR is because the femur on the left doesn't have internal rotation. So if you have this scenario where I got a twist of one, one joint going one way, you got another joint going another direction. In order to restore movement options, you have to twist everything the opposite ways. So what that might look like on the left, which is what the unknown question asker is mentioning to us, is you might drive femoral internal rotation, but then you're cueing lateral heel contact, so that creates tibial external rotation, and it helps supinate the foot. On the right side, and what you'll see with that then, is many times you'll have to push the knee out while maintaining inside heel contact and potentially arch sensation. What that will do is that will IR the tibia, ER the femur, untwist the twisted extremity. And a lot of times if you do that, that can help restore movement options. If you want an example of a great move series that I apply a lot with my Supreme clientele, that would be bottoms up shifty split squats. That's why with that particular move, I will encourage the weird twists that I'm doing. So on the left with that particular move, I'm cueing lateral heel contact, but having them turn the zipper on their pants to the left, AKA rotate the sacrum left so they can get inner thigh to drive femoral IR. 
And then when I'm doing it on the right side, doing it and doing it and doing it well, you might say, shout out to my man LL Cool J, my first album that I ever had, what you gonna do about it? How did I get it? Snuck it away from my mom. Anyways, on the right side, there I'm going to cue inside heel contact, maintain inside heel contact, like we talked about before, to drive pronation of the foot, but then I'm gonna externally rotate the femur to untwist the twisted leg. And if you do that, you come up a little bit, you take a few breaths, survive the move. A lot of times you'll get a nice restoration of movement options and no one will mess with you. And that's why folks, this stuff can get confusing, right? Because you got twist this way, twist that way. But that's where relying on your tests to give you some information can be useful. The crux of what I do day in and day out is I look at what movements that person cannot do, what positions they cannot place their body in. And I find activities that they can get them into and make them suffer in a very nice, friendly way that gets them to restore their movement options. If you can do that, and then just respect structure on top of that by looking at the infrasternal angle, because that will let you know what sequence you have to go with things into, which if you want to learn a little bit more about that, check out the um, uh, the, the posts I did on compensatory strategies, I'll link it in the show notes. Don't worry, your boys got you. But if you do that, a lot of times that will help restore the movement options and eliminate the confusion. Trust your tests, appreciate structure, put p people into positions that they can't get into and make sure they can stack. If otherwise, can't talk to Zach. Those would be the keys. Awesome question, unknown question asker.